Okay, so that's uh, it's uh, it's uh, ten o'clock already. So let's get started. Okay. Um, um, the first chapter is perhaps one of the few uh, only few chapters that do not need uh, that much time to cover. So hopefully we can we can I can let you go before twelve o'clock. Okay. So uh, obviously it's introduction. Okay. So. Um, first, I would like you guys to be aware that computational geometry has tons of uh, applications. Okay, um, so um, for example, okay, say if you are on campus, okay, uh, and you want to make a phone call, okay, obviously, and not nowadays nobody. Uh, 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 you know, everybody has a, has a cell phone. Okay, I mean, whenever you want to make phone calls, just Grab your cell phone and make it right. But uh, in the old days, okay, uh, whenever you need to make a phone call, when you are outside, you need to go to the public phone, right? Public phone, public phone booth, okay. And uh, um, there are probably, I mean, a number of public phone booths on campus, right? So you say if you are on campus and you want to make a phone call, the Obvious, uh, you know, reasonable choice is that you go to the nearest phone booth, right, to make a phone call, right. So, um, well, let's assume, okay, the uh, let's simplify the case a little bit, okay. Assuming um, the campus, okay, uh, we don't have any building on campus. Obviously, this is not the case, right. I mean, we we, we have a have a, I mean, some department buildings, I mean, on campus. But, but let's, let's remove those buildings, I mean, for, uh, I mean uh, imaginary, I mean, uh, let's imagine that all these uh, buildings are, are, are removed, I mean, for now, because um, this will make this problem easier, okay? And we want to go, just go to the nearest phone booth, okay? Then, okay, say uh, this is a space. And uh, assume this is a campus, and we have one, two, three, four, five, five phone booths. Okay, and uh, 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 as I said, you want to go to the nearest phone booth, and uh, since now you don't have, uh, there's no like a uh, building to block the your way. Okay, so so you can just treat the whole campus as a you know just a very plain two-dimensional space, right? So, so when you, so you, you could like a sort of like a divide this space into five cells, five cells, okay? And within each cell, okay, for example, this cell, this cell is formed by the points, these points in, the, in this cell, I mean, I mean a, any of these points, uh, are, I mean, are closest to this phone, phone booth than all the other phone booths. And uh, this, this, uh, the points here, okay, are closer to, closest to this phone booth than anybody, and any, any other phone booth. Okay, so, so you, can, you, can, you can sort of divide this uh, uh, two-dimensional plane into a number of uh, cells. Okay, each cell represents like uh, an area that is serviced by a particular form booth, right? Okay, but how do you divide this area? I mean, conceptually, conceptually, I mean, we, we want to do this division, right? Okay, and obviously, it, it looks natural to you, like uh, the, the, the two-dimensional space should be divided into several regions, and uh, one region for one form, form booth such that the, anybody in that particular region is just go to that particular phone booth because that phone booth is supposed to be the, the closest one. Okay. But how do you divide this itself? Okay. This problem is called Voronoi Darwin. It's one of the in, most important problems in computational geometry. Okay. Uh, we'll cover that in chapter seven, okay? And 
then let's assume uh, we are in a mo um, modern world, okay? Uh, we, uh, we, we no longer uh, require to go to those phone booths, but we may have some robots, right? I mean, in an advanced world, I mean, you have uh, robots all over the places, right? And uh, uh, say, some robots may want to go to the phone booth to make a phone call. Okay, then we will have what we call motion planning. In this particular problem, normally we consider there, there's obstacle on the two-dimensional plane. So these robots need to move, okay, uh, uh, you know, to a particular destination without being rocked by those obstacles, okay? It needs to know how to, you know, uh, you know uh, get around of those obstacles. How do we do that? Okay, that problem is called motion planning. Okay, we'll consider that problem robot motion planning in chapter 13, chapter 15. Okay, so, I mean, well, and uh, Say, like, uh, if you have two maps, okay, um, uh, and uh, sometimes we want to overlay two maps on, you know, onto each other. Why, I mean, why do we need to do that? Uh, we, we, a lot of time we need to do that for data mining. Uh, for example, okay, um, uh, you can see, like, uh, uh, you can, sh you can have a, a map to show, okay, the production of fruits, right? And then you can have another map to show you the height of each location, right? And if you overlay these two maps, then you can find out certain fruits are produced in mountain area, for example, okay? Uh, certain fruits are produced in a plant, right? Because maybe certain plants, uh, I, mean, I mean, the plant normally have, uh, has, a, has a higher temperature, okay? Which are good, which is good for certain fruits, right? But uh, you, you can do this discovery, knowledge discovery, when you overlay two maps, right? But, uh, you know, yeah, of course, I mean, uh, 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 if, if, you, if, you, if, if it's a human to do that, okay, we just assume those two maps are transparent and we can overlay this, those two maps, right? But how about if you want a computer to do that? Can we, can we you know, get that job done in an efficient manner? Again, this is an uh, interesting computational geometry problem, which actually will be covered next chapter, chapter two. Okay, so, so actually there are so many uh, real life problems um, that have this, uh, you can see all these problems, all these problems that we, we have uh, discussed, including this motion planning, Bono diagram, overlay maps. I mean, they have like a geometric property building in the problem, right? And uh, uh, um, uh, this, 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 I mean, uh, this is very common in like a, like a real life problems, okay? Because we are, we are living in a three dimensional material world, right? So whenever we consider certain problem, we are confined, we are restricted in geometric uh, uh, space, right? So, so, um, so this class is, okay, is to try to identify, okay, try to identify, uh, um, you know, the data structure, and the algorithms that uh, you know help us to to solve this uh, 
know, geomet uh, this this uh, uh, the problems that are related to geometric properties, you know, efficiently, okay, efficiently, okay, and uh, computational geometry. This this field, okay, actually was formed, and in a very late time, in nineteen seventies, okay. Do you know when the the algorithm was discussed? The algorithm was discussed much, much earlier, okay? Even before computer was designed, okay? People are discussing about algorithm, okay? That was like uh, before 1950s, okay? But uh, not until 1970s, okay? Uh, people start to think about, oh, certain algorithms, and a subset of algorithms, there, I mean, I mean, and the data structure happen to 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 deal with uh, uh, geometric uh, objects, okay? And uh, because of that, they sort of group these algorithms and the data structures together to call this field computational geometry. Okay, so so the definition of this field is a systemic study of algorithms and data structures for geometric objects with a focus on exact algorithms that are asymptotically fast. Okay, so we care about the performance a lot in this class because, well, as I keep reminding you, this class is sort of considered to be uh, a subfield in Advanced algorithm, okay. So in algorithm class, we care about the efficient efficiency, okay. So how do we come up with good solution? How do we come up with good solution for uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, problem related to the geometric objects? Okay. The good solution normally are based upon the good understanding of the geometric properties of the problem. So you normally need to keep looking at the problem and try to discover the, uh, the certain, what should I say, like uh, these geometric properties from this problem and make use of those properties when you design the algorithm, okay? And uh, also, okay, obviously, Proper application of algorithms, uh, techniques, and data structure also helps. I mean, if you know more algorithm design uh, principle, if you know more about different types of uh, data structure, they will also help you to design a better solution for uh, the computational geom ge geometry problem. Okay, so okay, so let's uh, uh, I mean as a, as a starter, let's let's look at this uh, particular example. Okay, this is convex hole. Okay, the convex hole is uh, itself is also one of the most important uh, problems in computational geometry. Okay, I'll be, I mean actually uh, um, to be honest, I uh, my PhD thesis has something to do with this, but uh, it's not exactly convex hole. My thesis has something to do with uh, alpha hole, okay, which is a uh, generalization of convex hole. But uh, uh, let, let me let me not to uh, uh, you know um, talk too much into my thesis. Let's talk about the convex hole first, okay? So what is convex hole? Okay, so. Um, obvious convex hole is two words, right? So let's talk about hole first. Uh, sorry, talk about convex first. Convex first. Convex, okay, is a, a subset uh, of the plane. We call that subset convex. If and only if for any pair of points PQ in this set, okay, the line segment okay, PQ, the line segment PQ, is completely content in that set. 
Okay, so for example, um, let's obviously draw uh, a, a shape, something like this. And if you have these two points, PQ, arbitrary, arbitrary pick two points, PQ, and you consider the whole segment, you can see this whole segment is in this set, right? And if this set, ha I mean, for, if you pick any two points, the segments of these two points is always in this set. If you have this property, then that set is considered convex, okay? So this is convex. But this is not convex, right? Why? Because if you pick two points like this, and you draw a, a, a segment, and obviously part of this segment is not in the set, right? So this, so left side, on left si hand side, okay, this is a convex set. On right hand side, this is not a convex set, okay? So, so, so now you understand what convex means, okay? But what is convex hole? Okay, convex hole CHS of a set S is the smallest convex set that contains S. Okay. Now, okay, when you write something like this, that S normally is uh, uh, defined by a set of points. Okay, that S here, okay, normally refers to a set of points. So, so, the, so the convex hole of a set of points is the smallest convex set that contains those points. So what kind of a shape can you imagine it will be? Actually, Okay, given a finite set of points, okay, like P1, P2, blah, 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 to Pn, we have, let's say we have n points in the plan, okay, the, 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 the convex hole of those points, you could imagine, you could imagine, a kind of just like, a, well, you have a bunch of nails, okay, you have a bunch of nails, uh, you know, uh, uh, on a plan, and you use, uh, you guys know rubber band, right? Rubber band. Okay, you just use a rubber band to surround those, uh, those nails, and it will shrink, right? It will shrink, and uh, eventually it will give you something like this, right? Each of these points, you can imagine, uh, as, a, as a nail on the wall. And you can put a rubber band to surround it. And it will shrink to form this shape. This shape is actually the convex hole of this set of points. Okay, intuitively it's like that. Okay, intuitively. And you, could, you, you can see that, okay, in this set, no matter how, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, what two points you draw, okay, the, the, the segment of those two points will completely contain in this set, right? Okay, so that's good. But the issue is, okay, even though intuitively we know, okay, we could define convex hole by rubber band, but uh, can you tell computer to, to do that? No, computer don't play with rubber band, right? We human play with rubber band, but computer don't do that, right? So that's the issue. That's the issue. How do we have the computer to, to, to I don't know, keep, let's say, given a set of points? How do we, you know, let the computer to compute the convex hole for us. So let's look at this, this, uh, this convex hole. Have a closer look at this convex hole. Obviously, the important matter of fact, 
for the convex law is its boundary, right? Right? If you know the boundary of the convex law, well, you have the convex law, right? Obviously, right? But the issue is, you know, what's the property of this uh, boundary? Okay. And let's, let's look at, uh, let's pick one particular boundary. Okay, say, this, this, this is one, of the, one side of the boundary. Let's try to draw a line, a straight line. Okay, PQ. And, uh, well, here we are observing the geometric property now. Okay, and you can find that, you can see that, okay, all the rest of the points are on one side of this, uh, this line, right? Uh, to be exact, okay, let's say we, uh, uh, this is the, um, straight line, it's on, it will be on the right side, right? All the points are on the right, right hand side. Let's say we are, we are facing to the direction of this line. All the points are on the right hand side, right? Right? So, so this, this looks like a, a possible prop, geometric property that we can, we can, we can use to identify the boundary of the convex hole, right? Right? Okay, I mean, basically, okay, what you need to find is like, uh, you just need to find like uh, the, the, okay, a pair of, uh, of, of, of points in this set such that when you draw a line, okay, all the points will fall on one side of that line. Then that, section, that segment, the segment formed by those two points, okay, should be, should be part of the convex hole uh, boundary, right? So can we convert? this concept into an algorithm. We could, right? We could. So you can see that, okay, we call, this is a blue force algorithm, okay, blue force algorithm. Uh, why do I call it blue force? It's because this algorithm is not very good, okay, because we only saw like a very simple geometric property yet, but uh, I'm going, we are going to look deeper into this problem, but uh, let's just use this uh, uh, observation for now, okay? We call this algorithm slow convex hole because obviously this solution is not very efficient, okay? So you can see at, 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 at the beginning, we said the E to be empty set. Then for all ordered pair PQ, Okay, so we, for any pair, okay, basically, we do value equal to true for all points, okay, not P or Q, okay, for all, all, all the other points. We check if, uh, if all those points lie on the, to the left of the uh, directed line. If, if, if any of the points lie on the left, we consider it's, it's invalid. Basically, we want all the points on the right-hand side. If any of the points fall on the left hand side, we consider P two Q because we consider the direction. Okay, so so if if, if any point lies on the left hand side, we just get rid of this. Uh, we said value to be false. In our world, we, we we get rid of this this pair. Okay, we always want the 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 point, I mean uh, the segment that has like a. You know, the older pair, okay, such that like all the points lie on the right hand side, okay. So, so you can see we we pick, we, we try to pick all all of the pair, and then we do this checking for all other points, okay. And then after we find like each sub each each order the pair, okay, 
from the set E of ages. Okay, we, we, we add those uh, uh, segments into the, the, set, uh, the, the set E. Okay, and then from the set E of ages, construct a list L of vertices. Okay, and those are the convex hole P sorted in clockwise order. Okay, so um, so this is um, this is algorithm. I mean, compute could follow this algorithm to 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 construct the convex hole. That's for sure. Okay, because each uh, statement is like uh, 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 very clear, right? And the computer can follow this statement without a problem. So uh, I already explained. Okay, this thing. So the, what is time complexity of this algorithm? Because we consider all the ordered pair, right? So for all ordered pair, this, this four is a loop, right? So how many times do we run this loop? We have n number, n, n number of points, right? So it's n times n minus one, right? Okay, it's not C N two, okay? No, it's N times N minus one because we consider all the older the pair. So P Q and the Q P are considered differently. Okay? So 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 N so it will be so because it's a it's a it's a uh, P N two, so it's gonna be N times N minus one. Okay, so we run this loop almost N squared number of times. And inside this loop, inside each, inside each of this loop, we need to check for all the n minus two points if they fall on the left hand side or not, right? So we need to do this n minus two. We need to do this uh, for all points not equal to p or q. We do this check n minus two number of times, right? Right? So it's going to be n times n minus 1, okay, and then again multiplied by n minus 2, right? So this L algorithm is going to be, you know, n cubed. It's going to be n cubed. High complexity is going to be n cubed. Where n is the cardinality or the number of points in the set P. Okay, this N being in computational geometry, okay, N, N cube is considered very, very slow, okay, very, very slow. Okay, we normally consider, we normally want the, 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 the algorithm to be, uh, um, you know, of course you couldn't beat the linear, okay, uh, uh, it's just impossible. But normally, if we would look for like n log n, something like that. Okay, uh, especially for problem this simple, we, we to to have a n cube time complex is is unacceptable. Is unacceptable. Okay. So, so this is the first issue for this uh, algorithm. This is really slow. Okay, that is also a reason we call this L with a slow convex hole. Okay. And we also need to consider what we call degenerate cases. What is degenerate case? The degenerate case are the cases that, um, 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 for example, okay, in this particular example, some points may be collinear, right? More than, I mean, you can see that when we, what happens? Okay, when we draw this, this, uh, this set of points, okay, we, I mean, actually, you can see that no more than, no more than two points are collinear, right? No more than two points are collinear. Okay, but uh, but uh, in reality, you may have a situation like this. Okay, this 
it, this situation will become much more severe when, well, your set of points happen to be produced digitally. For example, uh, uh, um, uh, say you, uh, you use mouse to click uh, the, the, your, your terminal to create those points because each point on the terminal is represented by integers. Their coordinates are represented by integers, right? So it will be much easier for you to create, much common to, to create like a multiple points that on the same line, right? Because, well, I mean, those coordinates, I mean, they, 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 are, they are integers, right? Okay, so, so, so this is what we call degenerate cases. And uh, obviously, I mean, when, when we use uh, the original algorithm, ah, okay. We, if R lies to the left of the directed line from P to Q, blah, 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 blah you will see that, okay, uh, if you just directly follow this algorithm, what happens is that, okay, this segment will be included. 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 And uh, this segment will be included. This segment will be included. For, 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 for this line, for this, supposedly we should have only one, uh, uh, one side, right? But uh, you are going to end up having so many segments to be picked up by the previous algorithm. Right? Okay. So, so how do we do that? How do, how, do we, how do we make sure this doesn't happen? We need to do some changes. Okay, for example, okay, we can change line five. Uh, line five here. Line five is a condition. Okay, if R lies to the left of the directed line, okay, we, we, we get rid of that. So, uh, uh, um, here, okay, now, not only we need to check if, uh, uh, if this segment, uh, if, R, if R lies, if any point lies to the left of the directed line, or, or this segment, this segment is contained, is contained by another segment, is inside of another segment, then we will have to get rid of the PQ. Okay, by doing so, uh, by doing so, we leave only the, the longest segment because this longest segment doesn't is not contained by any other segments, right? Yes. When you when you are checking some certain PQ, you might haven't checked the longest segment. Yeah. So, so there are some. I mean, you need to come back. You need to check multiple times. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, you, you need to you need to come back to check again. So so the type complexity may change, right? What I mean is like uh, the algorithm need to change in order to take care of this issue, right? This is a very good observation. Okay. Actually, it, it will affect the complexity. Okay, it's actually much more complicated than that, right? So, what I mean is like, okay, this algorithm, that is why I call this algorithm brute force algorithm, because when you think deeper, some issues will be there that you have trouble resolving that, okay? Um, not only that, I mean, not only time complexity, but also things like that. And uh, not to mention, there will be flow point computation, okay, that may lead to wronging error, okay? For example, when you consider this line, this line segment, okay, uh, uh, well, because this, assuming that those points are, are integer, okay, let's consider this, this, uh, this, uh, this line, because this line is a, is a, is a, 
uh, it's, a, it's a slope, right? It has a slope. So what happens is that, uh, okay, maybe some point, some point happen to fall on the, on the, right, uh, on the left hand side because of the rounding error. Because you can see these two points are supposed to fall on the line, right? On the line, right? But, but because of the rounding error, some point may be considered to be not exactly on the line. Okay, it may, may be, be considered on the left hand side of the line, which will lead to what happened? This, this segment will be ex excluded, will be excluded from the boundary of the convex hole, right? So, so that tells us this algorithm is not robust. What, what, do, what do we mean by an uh, algorithm is robust? Okay, when we say an uh, algorithm is not robust, it means like um, um, some minor issue may render a terrible uh, consequences. Okay, that's like uh, what we mean by an uh, algorithm is not robust. Okay, we want the algorithm that even when there's a rounding error, when there's a minor computation issue, it still gives us, you know, say, okay, for example, okay, say, say, uh, uh, if, 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 supposedly these two points are, are supposed to be uh, on the same line, but if it happened to be considered on the left hand side, just a little bit, I mean, we want this to be included, maybe like, like this thing. Included in the context hole, okay? Even though it's supposed to be a beam, a line, but uh, uh, just one side, but we could consider that as like a, you know, a combination of two sides, okay? Even though this is, you know, because the, you know, uh, the breaking that one side into two sides may be caused by the, the rounding error, but uh, at least like, uh, you know, the resulting convex hole still looks a lot closer to the correct uh, answer, right? Okay, so that's what, that's the property we want from the algorithm. Okay, that's the, what we call a robust algorithm, okay? So, so having, you now, Discuss like uh, the, the 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 issue of uh, this algorithm, uh, this uh, this slow convex hole algorithm. Let's consider if we are able to to do a better job. Can we do a better job? Okay. Can we design a better algorithm to uh, first not only we want um, uh, faster algorithms. We also want the algorithm to be robust. Okay, so now let's uh, go back to the the, the convex hole and uh, see more if we can identify more property. Okay, let's say assume we have found part of convex hole and need to locate the next point in the hole. Okay, let's consider this problem in an incremental manner. Okay, in an incremental manner. So this is one of the common techniques uh, we use when we design the algorithm. Okay, so, so, so we need to, so if we, when we say this sentence, Okay, so need to locate the next point in the hole. Okay, this next point actually sort of uh, uh, refer to a certain order, right? To a certain order, right? So, so we could sort of consider all these points to give these points an order to be considered. Okay. So, so, so first, we, we, we can try to order all these points, okay, um, 
I mean, from left to right. Say, I mean, say, if we try to break the convex hole into what we call upper hole and the lower hole, obviously, the, the, the point, okay, say we, 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 let's, we, we let's, let's consider we, 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 let's consider we only consider the upper hole. Okay, then we start from P1. Then, yeah, the, the, the point here, okay, the, the order will be in the incremental order of x coordinates, right? The point in the upper hole, okay, from P1 to Pn, okay, P1 being the, the point on the leftmost uh, in the up convex hole, Pn to be the, the, the point on the rightmost point. And the upper hole, okay, if, if you consider from P1 to Pn, well, the, the, the point, their the, the, the x coordinate must be in incremental, I mean, must, must, must in, be in increasing order, right? In an increasing order, right? I hope this is obvious, right? So let's first try to order, try to, try to sort all the points by their x coordinate. Okay? We sort all the points by their x coordinate. Then you may ask, you may ask, how about if we have two points that have the same x coordinate, but they have different y coordinates? We can use their y coordinate to break the tie. Okay? For example, like uh, uh, if two points are have the same x coordinate, whichever has the slower, uh, smaller y coordinate, take the precedence. Okay, something like that. Okay, that's fine. So, so let's say, let's say we 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 already construct what we call the 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 the, the upper hole to this point. To this point, okay, and then okay, you can see okay when you consider the next point, okay, in in the order of x coordinate, okay, the next point will be this one, right? Okay, and then the next one will be this one, and then the next one will be this one, right? Before you consider this point, you can see that, yeah, they are, they are, they, they are okay, right? These points are okay to be convex hole, right? So what is the property for them to be convex hole? When I say they are okay, why, why do I say they are okay? Before you see this point. Because we are t making the right turn, right? When you drive a car, okay, let's say this is the highway. Then you, you, you make a right turn. Then you make a right turn here, you make a right turn here, you make a right turn here. If you keep making right turn, that's fine. I mean, from here you can see you make right turn all the time. Right? But if you, if the next point, if the next point, uh, I mean, say now you are here, right? If the next point is this one, this is, you are making a left turn, right? You're making a left turn. When you're making a left turn, this point is not allowed. You should remove this point. Okay, same thing apply to this point, okay? After you removing this point, if you try to, you know, have this point right after this one, again, there's a, there's a problem, right? Because you are making a left turn, okay, right? So you should remove this one too, and you should remove this one, okay? And after you remove, after, after removing these three points, you are good, because here, you're no longer making left turn. Okay, you go from here to here, which is fine, right? So this observation, again, is a geometric property, right? 
is a geometric property. And it's a much deeper geometric property than what the rubber band observation that we observed, right? Okay, so, so, so basically, okay, using this concept, okay, the making right turn concept, okay, we can design this incremental algorithm. We're starting from the leftmost point, starting from the leftmost point, okay? Well, and uh, luckily you will find the leftmost point has to be included in a convex form, right? No matter how you draw it, the leftmost point must be there, right? So you start from that point, and then you can see the next one, okay, in the, in the order of x coordinates, and you do the, 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 the you, know, you check the, the, the turning, okay? So, so this algorithm is exactly the, cons the, the, the concept I just mentioned. So you create, you use this uh, making right turn concept to, to, to create the upper hole. And then you can use similar concept to create a lower hole. Okay? And then you can have the complete convex hole. Okay? So you may ask, what is the time complexity? What is the time complexity for this algorithm? If, 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 if two points have the same x coordinate, you just use y coordinate to, to break the tie to get older. How about if two points have the same x and y coordinates? They are identical, right? Let's, I mean, well, we just, uh, let's consider that like, uh, points are at different location, okay? Uh, if two points are exactly at the same location, well, they are, they are basically as good as one point, okay? Okay, so that's, that's fine. We don't need to worry about that, okay? So, um, how about if there are more than three points on the same line? This collinear problem. So we can treat these collinear points, okay? We treat them as if they are making a left turn. Or you go, oh, this is the next one, okay. Well, if they are, you know, they, they are degrees, 180 degrees, then we consider this is uh, making a left turn. Because they are, when, they, when we consider they are making a left turn, automatically this point will be will be pop out, right? So we will only leave like a, you know, the, 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 the end point instead of the middle one, okay? So this is like very easy to take care. And rounding error is not, is not good, but not end of the world either. I mean, uh, we are going to be able to, as I said, like if we treat certain point to be, uh, even though they are, they are, they are collinear, or like they, they are, maybe they are making left turn, but, uh, I mean, because wrong arrow, we treat it, treat it, treat it as a, they are making right turn. Well, at least it's going to be close to the, the correct answer, right? It's not going to be end of the world. Okay. So this is like, uh, this L is much more robust. And uh, this convex hole of a set of n points in a plane can be computed in n log n time using the second algorithm. Why? How do we have this time complexity? Time. Huh? Time. Yes, yes. How much time does it take to get like an upper hole? Older. Older and that's correct. Why? Because okay, you 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 will consider each point, right? You will consider each point because each point will be considered because we saw all the points in the x coordinate order, right? In the order of x coordinate. Right? So all the points will be considered at least once. Right? 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 How about at most how many times? No, twice. Because, okay, you, you, you may include the, some points into, for example, you include this in, in the, in the, in the convex hole. You include this in the convex hole. 
But when you have this point, as I said, you will pop this point out, right? But the, the reason you pop this one out is because you found out this is making a left turn, right? So when you make a left turn, that means what? You conceal this point again. You need to do some calculation to find out this point is making a left turn, right? And uh, make a left turn again. So, oh, this is good. So, so this point will be popped out. Before it was popped out, you, you actually make some computation, right? So, so basically, each point, well, it, it, each point will be considered at least once, but at most twice. So it's, you, you put in the, 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 the console and pop out it, okay? So, so, so at most twice. I mean, when you construct the upper hall, and the, the same thing, uh, so, so, so the upper hall, okay, the, uh, the, the, comp the time to compute the upper hall is, is linear. Same thing applied to compute the lower hall. It's also linear time. Well, two linear time computation it's still be linear time, right? Right? So the only, uh, you know, operation that takes more time to compute is the sorting. The sorting of the, the points. At the very beginning, before when you, when you sort all the points according to their x coordinate, it will take n log n. So that is why it is n log n. If you already have all the points sorted, the rest of the algorithm actually run in linear time. Okay, in linear time. So this algorithm, okay, this algorithm is actually a famous algorithm. Okay. Uh, this is called Graham scale. Graham, Graham, because uh, it's named after a uh, uh, um, computer scientist. Okay, uh, obviously, uh, name is Graham. Okay, um, so uh, but uh, the the textbook didn't use his name here, but actually, it should be referred. It should, I mean, his name should be referred. Okay, so um, okay. So you can see that not only this algorithm is robust, but also it is a much faster algorithm. Why? Because we are making use of a much advanced geometric property in the convex hall. Okay? Because we observe more uh, in this problem. Okay? So um, well, um, yeah, I mean, I understand that uh, it's supposed to be break time, but since we only have a few slides left, so let, let me finish the last rest of slides and we, I will let you go, right? Is that okay? Okay. So, when we design the algorithm for computational geometry problem, we normally consider three phases. Okay, we normally consider three phases. The phase one, we normally ignore everything that will clutter our understanding of the geometric concepts, okay? Including those uh, degenerate cases, okay? We consider the general cases first, okay? And the two, from those general cases, we observe certain property, and then we make use of those properties. And then after you have the, uh, the, 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 the primary concept uh, and you, you can design the, your algorithm based on the primary concept. And after that, you have the algorithm, right? So you need to adjust your algorithm, okay? Uh, in the presence of degenerate cases. In most cases, in most cases, I'm not saying all the time, it's always the case, but in most cases, you will find that, you know, uh, 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 changing the algorithm a little bit to accommodate the, the degenerate cases normally does not increase the time complexity of the algorithm, normally. I'm not saying always, but uh, because this is most of the case. So, we, we, we suggest 
you first do not consider all the degenerate cases. So you design an algorithm, and then you, you consider degenerate cases. Try to, and then try to make your algorithm to be correct all the time. Okay. The third phase is the, 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 the time you start the implementation. You try to write the code for the algorithm. Okay. Uh, in this class, actually, actually uh, we are not asking you to write the code, but uh, uh, to be honest, I mean, writing code is also very important. Uh, um, the phase three is, uh, is actually an important part, but uh, uh, because uh, it, I don't think we have uh, enough computers to accommodate like uh, uh, the whole class, I mean, to, I mean, for this phase three anyway. And second, okay, all the concept we, 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 disc, we, we are, I'm going to teach in this class, um, they are already computational geometry library that has already implemented all these uh, algorithms anyway. Okay, so, you, so I, I guess, I mean, if you understand the concept and know where you can find those library, I think that should be fine. Okay, that should be fine. So you can find, as I said, you can find the based applications of computational geometry, such as uh, computer graphics, robotics, okay, G what is GIS? It's ge geography information system, okay, which is uh, actually a hot topic uh, recently. I mean, uh, one of my research field is uh, in spatial database, I mean, uh, which has something to do with GIS too. Okay, uh, if you, you know, like, uh, like uh, uh, Department of Geography is also a big department in our, in our, uh, at NCU, right? So if you go to talk to those people in the G, uh, geography department, they will tell you like GIS is so important. Okay, actually, like uh, uh, if you are in computer science, you can you can, you, you can go to take their job. You know, uh, if you know something about GIS, okay, and CAD CAM, okay, I mean because it's about drawing, right? Um, and it is also can be used in wireless networks. Okay, uh, for example, like. Uh, uh, when, you when, you, when you design a uh, protocol for all these networks, okay, sometimes we can consider like uh, the trans the the coverage area of a sensor, the sensing range, to be to be a, a disk. Okay, so now okay, say you want to deploy sensors to cover a certain range, then it's kind of like a conceptual. It's kind of like a, you are putting some disk. You, are, you want to have a minimum number of disk to cover an area. So this is obviously a geometric, computational geometry problem, right? So that is, that is what my, uh, th 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 there's something to do with my PhD thesis, actually, okay? So, so there are other stuff, okay? For example, like uh, later on, when we talk about like a, a database, okay? You can also sort of like a, like a convert like, because in, in in general database, I mean, you, you will feel like it, it has nothing to do with uh, with the computational geometry. But actually, you can sort of convert the the, 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 the database into a computational geometry problem, okay? And, and use computational geometry solution to solve to solve the the uh, database query as well, okay? Um, we'll get to that point later, okay? So there are base applications of computational geometry. That is also why I want you guys to form a group to find like, research papers on the application of computational geometry. Where there are so many of them. I mean, if you are a, 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 a graduate student, you should be able to find some problem uh, that is uh, related to your laboratory, okay, uh, which requires certain computer geometry algorithm to solve. Okay, I hope you, you can you should be able to find that. Okay, if you are undergraduate student, that um, supposedly I mean you should be a, already affiliated with uh, with with some 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 lab, right? So you you can also I mean. 
I, I think we have uh, all the students here are at least at least sophomore, right? At least sophomore. We don't have freshmen here, right? Okay. So 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 finding some topic that is relevant to your lab, okay, which will require computational geometry. Uh, Okay, so that is about it for this class. Okay, for the first chapter, any question? Keep in mind that I will give you the first homework next week. Okay, next week, not this week, because uh, I will assign homework every other week. Okay. So, any any question? If no question, that's about it. Okay, so I will see you next uh, Wednesday. Okay, so okay, we'll come back to school. Okay, although I don't like to say that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>